Welcome to a Prescribing Lifestyle, the podcast that's all about empowering you to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm your host, Dr. Avi Charlton, and each week we'll dive into the latest research, practical tips, and inspiring stories to help you optimize your well-being. From nutrition and fitness to mental health and mindfulness, we'll explore every aspect of lifestyle medicine giving you the tools you need to make informed decisions and take control of your health. Whether you're looking into preventing disease, managing chronic conditions, or simply elevate your quality of life, Prescribing Lifestyle is here to guide you on your journey to wellness. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to embark on this transformative adventure towards a healthier, happier you. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Prescribing Lifestyle Podcast. It's your host, Dr. Avi Charlton. Today, I have a lovely lady, Paula Fenwick. She's a special friend, which i known from Speakers Institute Bootcamp. And uh, we've known each other because she's a very inspiring speaker. She's a leadership and empowerment resilience advocate. She talks about empowering women in the in uplifting women's leadership and talking about mental health, resilience. Welcome to the podcast, Paula. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Thanks, Avi. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I'll get you to briefly just give us an introduction on who you are and how you got got here. Thanks a lot. So, yes, I am a um, author and a keynote speaker. I have uh, done a book on um, resilience, bounce back fast. I'm very, very passionate about helping people um, deal with life's challenges. And I believe that there are some very practical tools that we can have, that we can learn actually to to overcome um, the things that we face. Um, I have worked for over 30 years in the pharmaceutical industry. I started my own business about a year ago now. And I've decided that it is time for me to step out and um, look at empowering women in particular within the workplace. And um, my next book is More Love at Work, and it introduces a growth EQ leadership model, and it uh, works with a framework of love which is about listening, openness, values, and empathy. So I have incorporated all the skills that I've learned over the 30 years, and Mm -hmm. I've used that so that I can um, empower and inspire new and emerging women leaders to connect to their inner power and find their unique voice so that they can achieve the, you know, sort of the confidence that they need for their personal transformation and so they can lead with greater impact and influence in in the world. Mm, wow, very inspiring. That's amazing. So how did you get, become a, a leader like this? How did you get into this journey? You said you worked in corporate for 30 years? I've worked in corporate for 30 years and in that time I've been um, in and out uh, of the corporate um employment but I've actually always been in the corporate space so I've either been a consultant to the corporate space or I've been working in in that corporate space and I have I started out in leadership well yes in leadership at the age of 28 wow and was my first leadership role and I have learned from my mentors I have learned from seeing it's done wrong and doing it wrong myself, mm-hmm. and um, and that has also um, created a huge curiosity within me. Okay, and I've I've sort of done a lot of research. Um, I do a lot of research generally, sort of that's my background as well. So um, I've done that with um, leadership skills, um, coaching skills, and really working with people. And mm-hmm. for me, over the years, I've real I've realized that I've actually fine tuned my own leadership style. Um, and as I've done that, I've gone. You know what? I think it's time. I see way too many um, women leaders 
mm-hmm. or people who are wanting to go into leadership and just not having that confidence. Mm. You no, know? they there's um because this whole thing with there's a lot of um organizations that are creating mm-hmm. opportunities for women. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, there's a lot of women who are scared of stepping up. Yeah, yeah. Or course. if they do step up into that role, yeah, they very they feel unprepared. They mm. feel unsure. They mm. don't know that, um, you know, how can they have those skills to be the leader that they want to be, mm. right? Because yep. the workplace is changing so so fast. Mm. So. All the work that I've done on resilience, which has come through my personal journey, mm-hmm. um, after the divorce, I had a, um, you know, really uh, twelve years, uh, eight to twelve years of real um, personal development mm-hmm. and personal growth, and um, so all everything that I learned from from those years, mm-hmm. I have implemented, and mm. I can see how it applies both in our personal lives mm-hmm. as well as in the workplace. Mm, wow. Would you share with us how you work through your resilience journey and how you overcome your divorce? Would you kind to share to with us? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, my divorce basically hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow. I was going through life. I had two young children mm-hmm. and um, I, ha- I felt that I had everything. I felt mm-hmm. that, you know, my life was kind of together. You know, mm. it was it was normal. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I realized that it wasn't and I needed to to basically end the marriage. Mm, and wow. through and through that, um I was devastated. Yeah. I was truly, truly devastated. And my whole world just imploded. It just wow. it just came crashing around me. Mm-hmm. And I had two young girls, seven and ten. Okay. And you can't really explain to them what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Because they just don't process. They don't have the process. So they got a very vanilla version okay. of, of what was going on. Yep, yep. And, and I put on the I'm fine mask. Wow. So you softened a bit before you tell them. So, so well, I, I actually only told them the whole story when they were in their mid to late teens. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, because I felt that they needed the maturity to process. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing. And it, it was, it was my, it was, it was the, the issues between my, my, my ex-husband and my, and myself. It was sure. not them. They were loved regardless yes of course and it's, yes. it's very hard when you're telling your children that they are loved yeah and at the same time you bitter and twisted yeah must be very you know, hard you, you, you there, there isn't that congruency so what i did was i put on a mask okay and you know fake it till you make it yes <laughs> but very early on in the piece i realized that that mask was only good for very short periods of time, for very limited things, because it's not real. Mm, yes, yes, Must you know, be very hard, of course. So, so I, I, I did. So I did a lot of personal development, psychologists, psychotherapists, um, coaching, um, mm. workshops, uh, uh, books. I ev- any everything and anything that I could to mm. to 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 get a handle on where I was at. Mm. And um, that's when I learned, and, and that is, I put it into my my book, uh, Bounce Back Fast, because mm. I've, I've realized that there are five steps. Okay, yeah. Would you share with really? us the five steps? Absolutely. So, so step number one is mm. to take ownership of who you are. Mm. Mm-hmm. You can't deal with anything. Mm-hmm. until you actually know who you are. Mm. You need to really come to terms with um, your strengths, your weaknesses, your values, your purpose, why you're here, the big purpose, the big mm-hmm. existential purpose, and mm-hmm. as well as the, the purpose you find in everyday life. You mm-hmm. have to come, you have to um, um, find out what what is it that drives you. 
And yeah. I realized that mindfulness journaling and reflection, which I call the awareness triad, was mm-hmm. honestly the best tools. And I use that to this day. Wow. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's the cornerstone of really taking ownership of who you are, yeah. working out what your emotional triggers are. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so basically I, that's step number one. Mm-hmm. Step number two was, Finding my direction, finding mm-hmm. comp- my compass. Mm-hmm. And I think we all have to focus on our, um, on, on what is at the center of what drives us so mm. that we know where we're going. Mm. Yep. Yep. Okay. So number three is to find your tribe. Yep. You know, I think it's understanding that when you're going through life's challenges, It's not about doing it yourself. It's not about doing it alone. Mm, Absolutely. I say that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important to find your tribe and, and, um, your tribe can be, it's everyone and anyone in your circle. Mm -hmm. So family, friends, those are very important. But when you're Mm. in a crisis, they only have, they are, um, good to talk to. They yep. can listen to you. They can empathize. They can support you. Yeah. But they don't, they're not usually able to unravel the spiral, the, the, the stuff that's going on. No. They're not professionals, right? No. So, and, and also sometimes, um, and in some people's situation, their, their families might be part of the problem or yes. the friends might mm-hmm. be part of the problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you need to be very mindful as to who you are allowing mm. into to the space of yours, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, so professionals are the most important thing. So, mm-hmm. I always suggest professionals. I yeah. think that um, it's very, very important. And the other thing that I feel it's that different professionals, even if they have the same title, mm-hmm. they might be both psychologists, mm. right? Yep. But they're different people. Mm. So how they interact with you is different. What they pull out from you is different. Mm. That connection is different. So if people don't connect well or they don't have a good experience, they often throw away psychology. They go, that person didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Or psychology didn't do anything for me. And I always say, Find somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't connect with that person, find the next person. Yeah. Find the person that you connect to. Yeah, absolutely. People click, people don't click. That's absolutely normal. You exactly. have to find the right person. And and don't give up because it's more important to have that support network. So yeah. so that's so that's very, very important. So that's my number three. Yeah. And number yeah. four is probably something that um you know, you're very familiar with, which mm-hmm. is to connect to your body and mm-hmm. connect to your emotions mm. because we need to get to know ourselves better. We need to understand. We need to, to get to know our mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what beliefs do we have? What, what negative self-talk? Mm-hmm. What's our language like? You know, is it mm. always I can't, I shouldn't, I wouldn't, mm. I couldn't or, or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, all of that kind of stuff. And yeah. then it's our body. Mm. You know, by by keeping our body healthy, by exercising, by prioritizing our health, mm. yeah, our, our physical health, yep. our mental health will actually improve as well. Absolutely. That's what I talk about all the time. Absolutely. All the time. So That's it. I, you know, it is so, so important. So as you can see, um, each time it's, it's, it's building on the whole. Yes. One is, is not above the other. And then the final one is, is to, is to actually embrace change. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so hard. it's very, it's, it is, um, it requires, it requires a lot of number one. It requires a lot of mindfulness. Yeah. It requires yeah. a lot of knowing who you are. It requires a lot of delving into everything that has brought you this far. Yeah. You know, know. to yeah. then actually come into the acceptance. Wow. I'm going to share and, with the listeners. Today I was just talking to my boys. 
whether we want to move to a smaller house, which is closer to train stations so they can take the train, or whether we want to stay in our usual bigger house, but further away from public transport. So my teens have to be driven everywhere. So I, I don't know. The change is very, very hard. So I'm not sure about the number five. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting because um, when I was going through um, some of my changes, mm-hmm. um, it was actually before I partnered up again, yeah. I, I visualized, I actually sat down with my girls and asked them the exact same question. Really? Yeah? Yeah. And we did. So I, I do a thing called the, the be, do, have. Mm-hmm. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? And what do you want to have in the mm. different areas of your life? It actually comes from the, uh, an, you know, neuro-linguistic programming okay. um, um, techniques. Yeah. And and essentially, we, I sat with them, even though they were youngish, I sat with them and go, okay, so looking forward into the next couple of years, what kind of a family, what do we want from our family unit? Where do we want to be, you know? And if we want to be that, what do we need to do and what are we going to have? And, and sort of, we sort of really looked at that as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we actually decided that we wanted a house um, and we were very specific about what we wanted. Okay. And um, we, we actually, I wrote down everything. I, I wrote down our needs and yeah. with, I was talking to the girls and then I sat one day. I had one girl on each of my knees. Okay, yeah. I don't right? think I can have my boys on my laps. So. No, no, probably not. But they were younger, <laughs> right? So we sat at the computer and mm-hmm. we went onto one of those um, property um, things. I can't remember yep. which one it was. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And we looked through a couple of houses and we picked the house that we wanted. Oh, wow. And yep. and I took, we weren't ready to buy. So we picked the house that we wanted. I took a photo, I, I took a, a snap, a screenshot of that, mm-hmm. and I took yep. a screenshot of the um, of the floor plan. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I put it on my dream board. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fast forward about three months after that, we started getting our house ready for sale. All right. And fast forward another month or two. I, we started looking for a house. Yeah. We, I'd forgotten what was on that dream board. Oh, okay. Hadn't gone back. What we wanted still remained the same, but I didn't always revisit what was on the dream board. Mm-hmm. There were three houses that we went to, and none of the ones, they, they really just didn't suit us because we were very clear by what we wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the last one, the guy said, well, and I said, look, I, I don't like this house. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, well, I've actually got one two doors down, but mm-hmm. it's not finished yet. It was it was like 90% complete. Mm-hmm. We went there. It ticked all of our boxes. Great. And when the contract was signed, I thought, oh, I must go and take my thing off the dream board. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know it that was the it same was, house? It was. It wasn't the same house, but the floor plan Ooh. was identical. Wow, that's amazing! So it's very important to and and I've used that so many, so many times. So that be do have is yeah. is one of the tools that I teach because I have had so much um, success with it. I have. I've. Um, it really. Cuts out all the fluff. Okay. You you become really laser focused in what you want, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That's a great story. I don't know. I still don't know if we should be moving to a smaller house <laughs> or keeping our further away bigger house. We'll see. We'll just park it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, that's great advice, Paula. That's awesome. So um, tell us what you do now. You have some coaching and you do some speaking gigs and what are you doing? Yeah, so I'm actually doing um, keynote speaking mm-hmm. and um, I'm, I've got some, I've got coaching clients as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm really looking and uh, working. I'm, I'm actually working with new and emerging women leaders 
-hmm. because I feel that um, things are changing so quickly mm. and um, so many women are just not prepared mm -hmm. to take on those roles and, yeah. um, you know, they need the tools and the skills to, to, to get there. And so that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm doing mm. quite a bit. So, and I'm also doing, I'm a Rotarian. So I do oh, yeah. some speaking with Rotary as well. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, and I've done, I've done a talk about two weeks ago on, um, Australian Rotary health and things like that. So uh, around mental health, things that are focused on mental health, uh, mental resilience, all of that is very important to me. So that's kind of, what, what I'm doing right now. Wow, that's great. Well, some of my listeners would say, I'm not an emerging women leader, but then you said earlier that every one of us in the women are leaders. Tell us more about that. So the way I see it is that at some point in people's lives, they're leading something. Mm. You know, whether it's where are you, whether you're in a home as an adult, excuse me, So whether you're a mum or a dad or whatever, you know, you, 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 you're a leader. Mm. You're, re, you're a leader in your family. So whether you've got an official title of a leader mm -hmm. or whether you are, are in, a, in a home environment, in a community environment, you might be in a community group, um, we, we step up the skills that you build as a leader. Mm. are important in li in throughout life it doesn't yeah. matter if you have a title or not yes yes you know i just feel that it it equips you to manage people mm. and to manage people is a wrong word to connect and interact with people because that's really what we do yeah absolutely it's it's all about connection it's about yes. um connection and interaction because leadership is not hierarchical no. Leadership is not power over people. Okay. It it is it, it is having your own standing in your own power, in your own strength. Yeah. So it's not power over people. I think it's so just a lot getting of women to be I, more confident. Is that absolutely. It? So it yeah. is. It's about standing in your power. It's about mm. being confident. It's about being true to who you are. Mm. And that doesn't require a title. Yeah, that's great. That's great, Paula. Have you got a few quick tips on mental health? Well, I think the most important one is really the mindfulness. Mm, yeah. I, I really feel that if there's one thing that people will say, well, I don't have time for this and I don't mm. have time for that. Yep, yep. Practicing mindfulness if you mm. forget about everything else mm -hmm. practicing mindfulness mm. is the thing that shifts most of mm. the negative emotions because you 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 become still you you become um uh, aware mm, that's it you start noticing you start noticing your own emotions yeah, yeah. You start noticing your highs and your lows and, and you can actually honor those. You can actually go, you know what? I, I feel stressed right now, or mm. you might even not say it, but you might mm -hmm. go, you know what? I need to do something. I need to go for a walk. So that mm. mindfulness mm. actually has so many, um, uh, um, long term consequences, long term mm. benefits beneficial consequences yeah yeah and i think people often um confuse mindfulness with meditation yes that's right you can have mindfulness meditation but meditation mm -hmm. is not necessarily my mindfulness is a state of being yes just you know? being aware what your mind is doing and being having an awareness having an awareness and also it is it is a way of um a disconnecting yeah. from any angst. So mm. a lot of people, anxiety, unfortunately, is very common nowadays. Yes, absolutely. And we, you know, we're living in this world that is so fast paced and everything. Yes. And so anxiety is very, very common, whether yeah. it is clinical, 
mm-hmm. or whether it is just this feeling that you've got, yes, right? Or just stress. There's a rushing just around stress. all the time. All the time. So bringing the attention to the breath. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's all it is. That's, That's right. all it is. It, it actually short circuits. Yeah. You know, there is a... Um, there's a physiological basis to that, and I oh, mean, yes. you, you 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 know that yes. from 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 your from your training, right? That's right, yes. And from your practice, but um, essentially, it doesn't matter if you know the science behind it. But if mm-hmm. you just take that time to 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 connect to your breath, mm-hmm. you will short circuit the angst that's happening and all of that kind of stuff. And then connecting that with a level of awareness as to what caused that, where, where am I going with this? What you know, and, and so, so that's why for me, the mindfulness journaling and reflection, the awareness triad, okay, is is honestly the most powerful tool. Yeah, but that's awesome. But, that's that's exactly what I talk about as well. But, that's right. <laughs> What's your personal practice? How do you? Do your mindfulness or have you got a routine? I do. So I do do mindfulness meditation in the morning. Okay. And but throughout the day, I've, what I've found that over the years, mm-hmm. I have found that mindfulness has become more and more a state of being. Okay. And um, and it's, it doesn't matter. Like I can be in a happy situation, mm-hmm. and I will notice the joy. Okay. Yeah. I will actually notice my emotions. I will notice the joy. I will notice, um, you know, um, seeing something really beautiful, you know, like a sunset. Yep. Yep. And I actually will not just feel the emotion. Mm-hmm. I will observe the emotion. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so, um, the same applies to when there's, an, um, anxiousness, when there's mm-hmm. conflict. Mm hmm. You know, if you're in a situation where in front of you two people might be <clears throat> um, sort of having words to each other or there's there, there's some unpleasantness or whatever, I can actually feel inside me yes. what's coming up. Yes. I can feel whether I'm triggered. I can feel whether there's empathy, whether there's, you know, I, I, you become very aware of your own emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And the more you become aware of your own emotions, the easier it is to then tap into other people's emotions and see where they're coming from. Yeah, I think it's just practicing. The more you notice yourself, the better you get at it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly right. So so that's really my thing. So it's, for me, mindfulness is kind of a whole day thing. Okay. Um, but um, But really it is my mindfulness meditation in the morning. And um, most evenings, but not all evenings, because it yeah. does depend. If I'm really exhausted, <laughs> um, sometimes when I'm really exhausted, it's exactly what I need. Mm-hmm. Other times, I don't. But um, my morning, my morning uh, mindfulness meditation is 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 my must. Yeah, it's, yeah. It sets the day, you know. It sets Absolutely. the day. It sets the mindset right. Yeah, most morning I do five up to fifteen minutes. Sometimes on weekends up to thirty minutes of mindfulness breath work whatever it is yeah that's right yeah so that's all very important the mindfulness and breath work they are honestly they the they the things if 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 you don't do anything else yeah you just do that you will notice there's changes there's changes that start happening in your life yeah yeah sometimes when i'm driving i slow down my breath and tell myself to count to Five counts when I breathe in and five counts when I breath out. And then I try and notice outside. And I think I'm trying to incorporate mindfulness when I'm driving and Mm. walking, exercising. It's been an amazing journey, noticing what I'm feeling. Yeah. I actually, um, so I have an interesting story that I started doing mindfulness Mm -hmm. before I actually studied mindfulness. Oh, okay. I, yeah. And I was doing it when I was driving. So when okay. I was driving and I was getting to a red traffic light, I would put my hands, I don't know why. Okay. I, I, I cannot give you the why. Okay. okay. I would put my hands like this in on my lap. Right. Yep. So I take, you know, you're on the, on the steering wheel. Yeah. I, I would put my hands 
and I would just notice my breath as I was watching the traffic light turn from red to green. Okay. Fantastic. And it was probably about maybe six to 12 months of doing that. Mm -hmm. That I then started reading about mindfulness. Okay. And I went, hang on a minute. That's what I do. <laughs> well, you're ahead of time. <laughs> so, yeah, it's actually quite interesting. It's like my body had a mind of its own. Yeah, and yeah. I started doing that. And I don't know why. I don't know why I chose the red traffic lights. I don't know why I did it. I just know that it brought me, it, it really centered me. And yeah. and it was not when there were other people in the car. It was really um to and from work. So okay. to and from work. Yep. I would do that. And then months later, I realized, oh, this mindfulness thing. Yeah. Yes. That's what I do. <laughs> and did it make you feel a bit calmer or less anxious or? Absolutely. More... Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't know if it was going into work or like, um, I don't know, maybe I just liked that. It was mm. the calmness of it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You know? Absolutely. So, yeah. And I had about a 45 minute drive at the time. Okay. And I would drive in. I've never been one for road rage. So I found it really calming, just, you know, just focusing okay. on my breath, watching the red traffic light turn green. And that was it. That was me. <laughs> That's it. That's great, Paula. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Fantastic. So um, tell us about, tell us the name of your book again and where people can find your book. So my book is called Bounce Back Fast. Okay. And it is available, it's actually available in readings in Doncaster. And it's also available online on Amazon. Okay, great. And yep. where can people find you? Um, on my website. So it's um, www.paulafenwick.com. Okay. So yeah, if you look up paulafenwick.com, you'll find me. And um, I do have a YouTube channel. And I do post really on LinkedIn and Facebook because I just feel that um, it's important to put out their um, tips because uh, people, as they're scrolling through their, their news feed, if they come across something, a lot of people are saying the same things. Yes. But yes. Sometimes someone is in just that frame of mind that there's one thing if i can say one thing yeah that makes someone go oh yeah aha uh -huh, you know yeah yeah then 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 that's good for me that's great yeah i will put all the links into the show notes on the podcast thank you very much and i think if i say the same thing you say there's something maybe the person who's reading it will click and then oh let's try give it a go exactly right because you know, I think we really need to get the message out there. And yeah. um, and there's uh, the world has changed, you know. It, mm. It's become very fast-paced. It's become quite stressful. There's a lot yes. of financial stresses. There's yeah. social – there's there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. And people don't always feel that they have the resilience. Absolutely. To, to deal with it. And, yes. and it's quite interesting because research has actually shown that, um, you know, you might think that a lot of people are, are, are naturally resilient. Yeah. But only 9% of people are resilient enough to be protective against mental illness. Wow. Okay. That's so interesting. So nine out of 10 people are below that level. Wow. All right. I'm hope I'm that 1% that can, can be resilient. Well, <laughs> we we need to that's why we need to, and we need to practice we mm. need to do the tool we need to commit yep. to actually doing the 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 tools doing the, and they're simple yep. but if if you don't make space for them you've mm. got a choice you can either scroll through facebook when you first yep. thing you wake up or you can do a, a few minutes of mindfulness yes and i can tell you right now which which option is going to be the best for you in yes, the long run that's right yeah yeah that's great advice well thank you very much Paula thank you for coming on to the prescribing lifestyle podcast pleasure I really enjoy your work and I think that um the message does need to get out there and so thank you very much for putting on this the, you know this podcast so great
Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this podcast. I hope you've got some tips. And don't forget to check out Paula's book and her social media on LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube. And you can check out all her advice on how to be resilient, empowered, and a woman leader. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thanks again, Paula, for coming on to the podcast. Thanks, Avi. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Prescribing Lifestyle Podcast. Before we wrap up, I have an exciting news to share. I have a new ebook called Low Carb Made Easy. It's now available. This guide is perfect for anyone looking to dive into the low carb lifestyle. Inside, you'll find the basic theory behind low carb eating, a detailed food list, practical meal plan and a variety of delicious recipes. It's designed to make a journey to better health easier, simpler, and enjoyable. For those who prefer a hard copy, head over to my website and register your interest using the link provided. My website is www.mlcclinic.com.au. Head to online store. Remember the information shared in this podcast. It's for educational purposes only and not proper medical advice. Always consult your medical professional before making any changes to your lifestyle and diet. Or you can come and see me in Melbourne Low Carb Clinic. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review and stay connected with us on social media. Your feedback will help us improve and reach more listeners. Lastly, if you found this episode helpful, please share it with your friends and family. Together, we can make a positive impact to our health and our communities. Thanks again for listening and as always, stay healthy and happy. Until next time.